economy correct itself. We have some devastating phases where the church is totally brutal, but it corrects itself. I don't see any form of correction mechanism in the Jewish state. Now, why? Because there is total blindness to the issue of temporality, history. This is something that I must mention because it is a crucial issue. You ask yourself, how is it that they were beaten in 2006, they repeated in 2008. They did the same mistake in 2008, Mavi Marmara, a year later, the same mistake. How is it that the, the Jewish lobbies in America and Britain are now involved in exactly the same mistake Jews were involved in Weimar Republic? Something that brought the Shah on themselves. How is it that so, we have so many stories of Jewish suffering and they never learn? I mean, some definitely learn. I hope that I learn. I hope. And let you challenge me about it. And I realize that what we are dealing here is a very interesting luck of understanding of temporality, of the issue of time. I don't know if people know about it, but Slomo Zan uh, wrote about it. Uh, but it is, a, it is, a, it is well researched now. Between 70 AC and the early 19th century, there is not a single Jewish history text written by a Jew. It is peculiar. There is no Jewish history. Why there is no Jewish history? Shlomo Zant, Shlomo Zant is a very interesting uh, Israeli historian, comes with an answer. He said, when you have the Bible in the, in the rabbinical Judaism, they didn't need history because all the answers are in the Bible. This is very interesting. 19th century, middle of 1840, 1850, the spring of the nation, they, they see a lot of nations around themselves, and they wanted to invent themselves as a nation, and they were very successful about it. However, I look at their history, and their history is very peculiar, and you cannot question it. You are not allowed to question the Holocaust. The Holocaust is like a religion at the moment. If you question the, the, the Holocaust or the meaning of it, you are an antichrist. So, a chapter in our collective history, there are some people in this room that remember it. I assume that you have a good memory of it. This is our past. This is my past as well. I cannot look into it. No one here in this room is entitled to look in, into it and to engage in with scholarship. No, you, you accept that six million Jews work? Um, I, I don't touch this subject uh, at all uh, because this subject is protected by law. Uh, but I think that the question whether there are 6 million or 5 million or 3 million or 8 million should be questioned. But I find some other questions that are far more interesting to do with the Holocaust. And they are far more interesting for all of us. What is the meaning of the Holocaust? How is it possible that three years after the liberation of Auschwitz, the Jewish state ethnically cleansed 
three, uh, that 75 percent of the Palestinian population and still racial laws that are not different from Nuremberg laws. This is the question. Six million, five million, nobody knows. Six million is a, is a mythological number. It's a legal number. If you say 5.7, you can find yourself in a jail, uh, in jail in Germany, which is ludicrous. Now, I just finished this issue of temporality, and then you will have to read because being a foreigner, you will have to read because what I realize about temporality is about the issue of time is that within the Jewish ideological concept of history, <coughs> the history is molded. We do whatever we like to suit us. So, if we want to be friends with the Turkish, I said no, no, it's an Israeli. If you want to be friends with the Turkish, we deny the Armenian Holocaust. If uh, we have a problem with Turkey, then the Armenian Holocaust becomes as, as important as the Jewish Holocaust. Everything that is like a traveling, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The question here is how do Jewish Israelis explain to themselves the denunciation by the UK and, and the United Nations and most of the world in response to their vicious attacks on their neighbors? How do they explain to themselves? This is, this is a a very important question because when you are obsessed with the notion of chosenness you don't really care what the going say. There was a very famous uh, um, Israeli Prime Minister leader, one of the most Israelis Russian by origin, David Ben Gurion, I'm sure that you heard the name. And Ben Gurion said already in the 50s, it doesn't matter what the going say, all that matters is what Jews do. So it really doesn't matter what you guys think. This is the ultimate form of Jewish supremacy. That is deeply, deeply imbued in Jewish political thinking. Is it, is it possible for that, for that to change? Because it seems that you have to have a signal shift in that attitude if you are to move to a one, na one nation state, which is the one that you support. For sure. Is that, I mean, is it, is, do you see the seeds of a possibility of such a change? It is a very, very beautiful question, and i tell you why. I just thought about it for the first time. Okay, we want to change it. If we change it in a collective, we are aiming to change it as a, in, a, in a Jewish collective shift of consciousness, it means that I maintain my Jewish collectiveness. But what is my Jewish collectiveness? My Jewish collectiveness is something that separates me from the other. So in a way, for a Jew to depart and to drift away from tribalism and accept universalism is involved with the complete denunciation of supremacy. If you denounce your specialness, your exceptional, exceptionalism, what are you left with as a Jew, especially as a secular Jew? This is a big problem. This is a big problem. I get into a lot of trouble for saying it. But I have to say, what is the difference ideologically? I don't say that in practice it works. What is the difference between Christians and Jews? It's very similar. The religion is based on the same fundamentals. But at least theoretically or ideologically, Christians are Jews who love their neighbors. 
Now it sounds funny, but it's not that funny. It's, this is Christianity universalized this tribal ideology. Now, how do we lift this ideology uh, so it is it kind of it, it moves it drifts away moves away from this chosenness. This is a spiritual shift. Can I go back to this word? You've spoken of the chosenness. How can the Jews so misread their own scriptures? Mm. Because nearly every time that uh, it is recorded that God said, This land I will give to you forever. Yes. In the next verse or two, he, it is written, Provided you keep all my laws and commandments. And they have broken every rule in the book and yet still seem to believe that they have kept their part of the treaty with God and are still God's chosen favourite people. Um, not God's people, are they? This one comes from other people. I chair. Yes. I pardon, pardon me for butting in, but our friend here made a comment earlier on which was disorderly, and I feel that it's oh, disorderly. Yes, to please speak, I can't hear us. Would you like to speak? Is it disorderly? Yeah, in that it wasn't part of the question. Just, I'd just like to distance myself from that comment that you made earlier on, uh, and say that I find it ridiculous and uh, abhorrent. Thank you. Uh, would you, have you got something you want to say? No, that's it. No. I just said there were. I think that God's chosen people are what they think want to control everything. Jesus tried to keep our temple years ago, didn't he, to sell you money on that? That's all I see. Okay. Do you do you think that uh, you know, this is? I, mean, I, I, I want to I, I want to address yes, to address this, uh, this uh, issue, and um, if you don't mind, you know, uh, because you have the beautiful voice. <laughs> and you the probably my accent you probably don't understand that uh, they're, they're most, uh, most, uh, this is why I'm getting away with what I think because nobody understands what I'm on about yeah, uh, yeah we will we'll be able to read this one in a second now it is a very the, the issue of chosenness is a very interesting issue from a Jewish religious point of view chosenness is a burden it's not a gift it's a burden God commands his people, his chosen people, to stand up as an exemplary force. Yes. Yes. Now, once we go through process of secularization and we draw God's yes. chosenness and become racial supremacy. Yes. Yes. And this is the problem that we have with Zionism, 